All righty. So Dylan's got to go pick up his kiddos. So we'll move on to Irfan Anudin. And did I pronounce your last name right? Uh, Ir Irf Irfan Anudin. There we yeah. go. So Irfan's one of my newer soil colleagues. I have met him through Professional Soil so Scientist Association of California and um, the California Forest Soils Council. And he has been instrumental in taking pictures of anything and everything that we are doing related to soils. Um, and so that's why I brought him in because he's brought, he's kind of expanded on stuff that somebody like Dylan is doing and providing an even more creative twist to things. So um, yeah, so you can take it away at your fun. Sweet. Uh, thank you so much, by the way, Megan, for having me here. I feel really honored. Um, I haven't met Juliet before, but uh, Dylan Bedet is quite literally like one of my soul science heroes. Um, I've been following his work for a long time. So to be um, presenting my work with his work is like, Mind blowing to me. Um, I think it's just, uh, yeah, I'm just so super happy to be here in that context. Let me share my screen. Okay, get into the mode. So uh, I'm definitely on my second coffee and slightly nervous. So hopefully I won't speak too fast because it's sort of a problem, anyways. But uh, essentially, what I'm working on um, is sort of, uh, um, a visual exploration of soils in Lassen Volcanic National Park. And since uh, there's been a lot of setup in terms, ooh, okay, I, oh, I forgot I had some animations in here. Okay, so uh, since um, they set up a lot about soil survey, I won't have to explain too much about that. Um, my advisor is Dr. Garrett Lyles, who also was in the graduate group with Megan and Dylan and uh, other people at UC Davis. And in his uh, experience, he worked on the soil survey in Lassen National Park. So I think it's really fitting. We've got someone who worked in Pinnacle, someone who's working in Sequoia and Lassen. So like very different areas in California. And um, I'm not entirely sure how, every, if, when they started doing this, but at least in Lassen, it was 2006. And when they started doing the soil survey, they started collecting these soil correlation boxes, which is what you see in front of you. So the actual soil, the samples from the national, from from the pits that they dug um, in these boxes as like a, you know, like an actual archive of that. And with national parks, I think that's really important because it's not something that you can just go dig on the regular. And I, as I understand it, even with the NRCS, you know, there's a there's a, a, a lengthier permitting process for working in in the national park so in that you know national the national parks are natural and cultural resources for the united states of america so preserving them and and educating ourselves on them um, is super important and one of the problems that i've had is when you go to the national park there's everything from the birds the bees the trees um but there's nothing about the soils right and so that's kind of an aspect that we're gonna talk about and so overall, I'm gonna talk about my background and inspiration, a little bit maybe of problems, opportunities of soils, uh, soils, photography, data collection. We'll show you these correlation boxes. I've actually got the app and running since I had first presented this uh, talk when Megan had seen it. So I'll actually just open up the app and talk about that a little bit. And so um, playing on the concept of soil orders and development. I was a young kid. I was born in New York, but uh, moved to Visalia, California. And my dad was an immigrant from, from, from Pakistan. And anytime anybody would come to America, we would literally take them to Sequoia National Park, Yosemite National Park. I grew up with Ansel. I have Ansel Adams on my wall and I would like go there and take pictures as a little kid. So just Kind of developed in in my process and then in high school um i was a really big uh video gamer i played everquest which is the game that they were the people who developed wow were playing when they made that game so you know a long time ago and the only reason i went to school were was for ceramics and pottery and then um as i developed a little bit farther you know from an ent enti earth to an encepti earth so my name is irfan the first three letters are earth most people just call me earth because of aim aol everyone shortened it to that. And then in my time as an undergraduate, because I spent so much time playing video games and not being a good student, it took me a while to become um, 
a well-established student and and I had to like work on myself through yoga and some other things and uh, I was a little bit of a salty student about the world and, and the context of everything, right? You know, uh, so then as I've developed and I went, I basically, I left school for a while and then I, I decided to go back. And I, uh, when I was going back, I was a much, uh, I think, better student and a lot of explosive ideas were coming off. So that's where I met, where in Andy Earp and where I met uh, Megan at the Forest Council. And then when I saw them, I figured like I started, I might as well start developing photos and film and, and cataloging this information. And then now that I'm working on um, an MS in solo science or interdisciplinary sciences, I feel like I'm a little bit more developed as a person and stable. So hopefully moving forward, you know, this will be a time of uh, a pro productivity for myself. So as I said, I met uh, Megan at these four soul council tours and I just like to pull our picture on the right. In, in the pit is Ron Tasky, who is a for like a long time, you know, emeritus professor. And then on the top is um, Earl Alexander, who's dug holes from Alaska to Mexico. And I, when I saw these guys talking in the field, I realized, wow, there is a lifetime of knowledge that I need. And so much can be learned from the practical conversations around these people. And so I got my camera and I started coming to these events. So Additionally, you know, soil judging, I'm not sure if that's something at Monterey Bay yet. I, I think Megan has talked about kind of maybe trying to develop this program. So it's something that really informed me. So between soil judging, the Professional Soil Science Association of California trips all around California and the California Forest Council, I have like an entire archive of soils information. And my struggle was how do I start to... Um, put this information on, on a website. So, and with that, communicating that is like, you know, the basics that you might understand as a student is that souls are complex. They're hard to access to go dig and check them out. Even the data, right, as we just saw, you know, it's complex. And while we've had easier access to it, so somewhat can be difficult to, to get to. Um, and then souls are incredibly important. And I don't feel this way, but you know, to a lot of people, soils are boring and they just sit there, right? So when you hear haplozer what a saw, it can turn a lot of people off, right? So I'm trying to figure out ways to like bridge that gap or open doors of relevancy to other areas of education. And so with that, I met my advisor at these meetings and I'm at Chico State doing an MS in interdisciplinary sciences. So I've taken courses in ceramics and, and pottery and uh, statistics, soil genesis, uh, visual anthropology. I did a, a documentary filmmaking and sort of museum studies as well. Um, and, and with that, like, I, I, I do want to say that, like, with ceramics and pottery and soils, like, I, I feel that potters were some of the original pedologists or soil scientists because they were searching for so for clays on the landscape and they had a, a deep understanding of where certain materials were right and so with that what i'm really interested in is bridging the gap between like the work that dylan's done and 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 modern learning styles right so when i was a student and i was struggling in school cramming for a class i would uh google you know, furiously at night to look for stuff for, for, to cram for my exam. And there was really a lack of information there. So um, with that, I started to develop, I've, I've been working on this and the main position in my thesis now has been soils are natural and cultural heritage. And I think there's a lot to talk there. I could really get into, um, but we'll kind of focus more on soil survey and, and um, like practical sort of information. So again, I worked on uh, the Soul Survey of Lassen National Park. And I would just like to say, to give you an idea of Lassen, and this isn't a full block diagram, but this is a rendering that I've done of, of, of the actual park. And so I'm still working on how to make, take the data information, overlay soils in this, but you know, like visual representations of a landscape. You saw the drawings of the block diagram. And this is where I'd like to start to, 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 put soils on visuals like this and kind of expand on that work. So in Lassen, there's roughly uh, 300 soil pits. The, they dug 300 soil pits over the course of three years to describe it. They ultimately have four orders, 11 suborders and 18 great groups. Uh, the dominant order within Lassen is Andesols. One of the really beautiful, cool things about Lassen National Park is that it has all four volcano types and with that, you know, um, it just makes for a really dynamic landscape. And um, 
you know, andesols or volcanically derived soils as like the primary parent material are uh, sort of unique anyway. So I think this is a really cool um, um, small sort of case study where we have andesols, entosols, inceptosols, and then a few uh, um, histosols in very, like very, very specific locations. Um, and again, my goals are multimedia archive web app to, you know, explore and discover soils. Um, we're just going to pass by ont ontology right now because it's a little bit more complex uh, topic than I think um, we need to dive into. So really the thing is, is when they dug these soil pits, they, they took these soil correlation boxes, you know, as samples. And so I wanted, one of my biggest things, as, as Dylan said, is like color, right? And like, like, how do you accurately capture color and represent it. So, you know, I've just done a little bit of standardization um, for scale, A, using a macro lens and trying to get it, uh, pictures that aren't distorted because oftentimes, you know, lens lenses can do a lot in terms of um, the shape of the image. Um, the color temperature is trying to mimic daylight. And then I use a color card in the post-processing to try to like uh, get the colors um, hopefully right. The more I dove into color though, there's so many complexities of, of, of Tate not only capturing the color, what color space it's stored in, and then how you're displaying that color. Um, and then ultimately everyone's looking at their stuff on a different device. So color ultimately changes um, depending on how you view it. Uh, so with that, you know, we saw a little bit about Sergo already, um, or uh, yeah, the soil databases. So there's the Sergo database, there's the Kellogg soil uh, KSSL, which has has like actual like uh, chemical data, and then there's uh, NASIS, which is sort of like the government sort of um, hi like hyper technical uh, 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 soil survey information, and then they kind of clean it up and make it available through KSSL and Sergo. Um, and the biggest thing for me, as I have been working with this, I've done a lot of work with learning R and programming and web development. Um, originally, I was going to, well, it, it's, it's come along, but ultimately, I think when you're working with soils data and data at all, like, you really start to think about how your data is organized, and, and, and I've worked with soils data in a laboratory setting and in a student setting, and looking at it from this government setting, it's like they all are slightly different. So ultimately, it's a bigger question that I've, I've started to, to ask. So that was kind of posing that, but knowing that soils data are complex and ultimately you're trying to reduce it down to something that's workable for uh, uh, whatever your intentions are, whether that be um, practical field, um, um, like certified crop advisor work, or if that's uh, research work, or if that's in my case, sort of fun educational materials. Um, Again, working with the stuff that you saw in, 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 in Soil Web, I don't have to talk about that too much, but the idea was to start to take this data and to reapply it in a, in a different way. And then ultimately, um, we talked about series. So when they also did the soil survey of last, and not only did they take these, these correlation boxes, but they took a picture of the pit and they took a picture of the landscape in the four cardinal directions being north, south, east, and west. Um, so, you know, and the idea of pairing data with visuals and the idea that soils are hard to access. So by, by, if they dug 300 pits and they have 300 photos on the landscape, my thoughts are, you know, we, as a student, I will be able to, well, I'll say, I'll say this. When I got trained in my degree in soil science at Cal Poly, I felt really confident in being able to dig a pit and describe it taxonomically. But, it, but at these meetings, what I realized very quickly is as soon as I popped my head up out of the, the pit and looked at the landscape overall and the dynamics of the landscape, I had no idea what was going on, right? And, and, and how many holes can you dig in a day? How, how much time do you have? You know, how, can, are you physically able to dig a hole? Because not everybody is, right? And so when we talk about accessibility of field work and, 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 um, disenfranchised communities, not everybody has the ability to do these things. So, um, or the, the, the money or, or, or the freedom to do that, right? So I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think about ways to sort of uh, develop that along. Here are a couple example series, but as I said, my app has already sort of been created. This was a mock-up of it, but um, currently uh, 
we'll just go to it. So right now it's available at soilboxes.com semicolon 3838 slash app two will bring you to my current, um, um, I can even just link that though. I think if everyone gets on it, the whole thing might, might just start chugging to a, to a halt. But, uh, the, the basic idea is that when they did this, the survey, we'll go all the way to the bottom. So this in front of us is a picture of the field sheet that is used when they dig a pit for the soil survey. And here's the front side with the site information and the back side um, has, the, has the actual field description, right? And what they do is they take this and they, they put this into the NASA's database. And this is where the soil scientists, you know, they work on developing the map units after you know, they take all this information. And what was really cool about this survey is the primary, uh, the survey leader went back to these original field sheets and refilled in the actual taxonomy for each one, plus um, a little bit more uh, information and sort of corrected stuff to really create a coherent um, um, field sheet system. So the way this is laid out right now is, I, originally I thought I was gonna be using the Sergo database but what I've ended up doing is creating my own database from these, uh, these field descriptions, because ultimately, I guess, not every one of these descriptions was, was entered into the database. Sometimes for economic purposes and time purposes, they only selected a few uh, for sending off to the lab or you know, other reasons that I'm not fully aware of. So I created a new database in this. And if you ever start working with R and programming, I employed a tidy data uh, sort of principles with my database. And when you look at soil data, it can really be messy. And oftentimes there are multiple um, multiple values stored in one field. And when you do data analysis, that's maybe not the best practice. So with that, uh, the way this works is right for now anyways, you have there's a few options. There's a single box display that literally just shows one through uh, almost uh, 300 and then there's a few 900s where these like pickup boxes at the end but each pit 300 boxes it just by ID which is almost like not very relevant and then um, a high resolution picture and 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 this is where maybe too high resolution for loading efficiently on the system that I have and I need to work on like image processing and more web development UI UX sort of stuff like you can't click on a picture and have it pop up. You know, there's some fundamental, like almost like internet web literacy that you might expect as someone who's a, a you know, uses the internet that just isn't there. So we have um, a little bit of taxonomy, the, the, the soil series, the order, the classification, a little bit about the, the location. It's uh, the landscape is mountains. The landform is a volcano. It's at 7,500 feet. It's sitting on a back slope and the, the geomorphic component of, of the back slope is, is the side slope. And then we have a picture of, you know, the box itself and then the pit that they dug. And then, and then this, you know, getting all this down, you can see where in Lassen Park it was actually dug, right? Um, and then the, the landscape, and then this is some, you know, simplified information from, from, the, uh, so, from the survey. So horizons, depths, uh, the boundaries, the colors, and then it's essentially all still in the coded coded form. I think I still have a lot to work to do to translate this to where it's like more readable for a student for the first time. Um, but for now, it's a prototype in my app. And then um, what I'm really working on is ultimately what I would like is to have one single page with like a whole series of, of options that you could just check or click on the box and then it would start to show you those types of soils dynamically, but that takes a lot more programming and, and, and effort for now. And I'm just trying to write my thesis. So with that, like, let's see which one do I want to go to? I want to go to the butte wash, butte wash. We'll go to the butte wash soil series. So right now, when you click on um, one of these soil series, it will bring up uh, um, the, the all of the different boxes that they use to, to map to, to map this one, right? And so this is where 
um, you know, I saw a, a conversation or a presentation once that was like one of the head people at Microsoft and she was talking about how people learn and it was about like just rapid information and iterating over things and not stressing out if you're right or wrong, but just have it like, like it was the, her, her, her analogy was plane spotters in World War II. If you tried to tell someone how, like explain how a professional or an expert plane spotter would be able to determine if it was a friendly or an enemy plane, coming in, if they try to write that down in a method, it was not effective in translating that information to other people. What was more, most effective was literally having a trainee and the, the expert and the trainee would say, friendly or enemy. And then the expert would say yes or no. And you would just keep iterating. And if you think about how machine learning works and how like AI and machine learning, AKA statistics uh, work, these models are trained by feeding in labeled information and the more labeled information you get, the better these models become. And I think that's how people can learn um, as well. So with that, I, I brought this one up because when the, I showed this to the actual soil survey guy who did the mapping, he, he focused in on this middle one. I don't know if you can see my mouse moving over. That's a little bit more red in here in the Ash Butte series. And there were a few images that were not correct um, and so I was, you know, he was helping me fix them up. And this one, you know, um, I, my labeling was correct. The, the numbers were all right. And then I asked him, you know, like if, like, why did he think this one was so different? I can see the colors, you know, is there something in the way they describe the taxonomy or, or the box or the pit that now when they see them aligned up next to each other, right, maybe it would influence how they interpreted that pit. And ultimately he told me that, uh, like this is box number 238 right there. He said, uh, this was derived from scoria of Fairfield Peak, a cinder cone. So it looks like ash butte, which is another soil series, but it is butte wash due to, due to the outwash or the parent material. And, and then he called it an imposter. So this is one where it looks different, but it fits the criteria of the taxonomy. So I thought that was interesting to where I was able to build something. The soil survey person was like, whoa, what's that? You know, and, but because I took visual information and have displayed it in a collection, you know, and series in a way that you can take the time to look at them, you know, in a, in a fast way, new, new uh, uh, insights can be gained, right? And, and with this, I thought it was just kind of cool. And with this one, you can also see on the map sort of where these pits were dug. I really need to get my UI a lot better because it's not, you know, I'm having problems with it. But either way, you can see how they talked about how, um, you know, accessibility. So here in Lassen is, is the Snag Lake Trail. So oftentimes, you know, a lot of these pits were, a lot of these pits were right off the trail. So, um, for me, this is what I've been working on. And this is, this is just the beginning for me. This was something that I like six years ago or five years ago, like, like I took all these pictures and I was like, I have a WordPress. Now, how do I get my pictures on a map in a gallery and all that stuff together? And there was no way to just do it easily. So I had to learn programming. And now I got that done. But the next part is, is the real stuff of like, storytelling on the landscape there was a slide earlier about like data-driven storytelling and and like i think yeah so that's what i'm trying to figure out is how to create visual content and and media that pairs well with sort of soil information and all this for me is a practice in terms of working with soils data uh understanding how to connect soils and my ideas like like in a in a, in a larger way and, 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 and sort of outside of soil science, right? And that's where I've worked in anthropology and ceramics and pottery. And this is well, where we did talk a lot about the San Joaquin series. So I just want to, oh, I, uh, that's, that's not showing up there right now because I have, oh, it's right here. So the San Joaquin series, this is a, a, you know, a pot that I did that I took, I read that series description and I created the, the, the depths and of the layers um, um, at the same scale. Right. And so just like education outreach in, in different ways. And I said, potters are the original pedologists. And if you saw like uh, Julie's uh, breakdown of the, of the, of the taxonomy, you know, there's one part that said like greater than 35% clay. So I want to be able to build an app using soil, the Sergo data that would be like, okay, this type of mineralogy and this soil has X amount of clay, maybe at dip, this depth, go dig here if you want to harvest wild clay and check it out, right? And that's 
soils education to people who are not soil scientists. And I believe that everyone needs to have like a fundamental understanding of our landscape around us. And, and soils are the neutral ground where positives and negatives, you know, you know, form a neutral place, but where it's where, where, where urban interests, environmental interests and agricultural interests can start to understand each other. And if we have like fact-based information to understand why and how people manage the landscape that they do and, 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 and the culture that arises from the spatial variation of the natural material um, of the United States will help us uh, come together as a more, uh, you know, uh, 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 hopefully a better, uh, uh, you know, I don't know, right now it just seems more relevant quite literally, but just like, you know, a more stable, 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 stable country or a more well aggregated country that's able to weather the trials and tribulations of, of, you know, the, the life and all that kind of stuff. But I don't know. So that's, that's kind of what I got. I think I could, I could just keep talking about stuff for a long time. Um, other things that I'd like to do is like get more visual information up there. So when you click on a soil, it's like, got one of these, you know, the hill slope profile and it highlights where it is on the profile or it shows, you know, which um, convex or concave it is or which block diagram these might sit in and a little compass, right? Or an elevation meter. Essentially, if you've played a video game and you've seen a heads up display, essentially that, but for soils and information. So um, with that, like my references are Bidet, Bidet, R, R and soil survey, right? So um, yeah, so again, questions, comments, anything like that. Uh, happy to talk. And other than that, just thanks for having me. Thanks for listening. Uh, yeah. yeah. Thanks, Surf. Yeah, thank you. Thank welcome. you. That's looking, the webpage look, is looking even better and better. So it's coming along. It yeah. looks, the and app looks great. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I, I mean, it's working for me, so I'm happy with that. <laughs> yes, the first step, it's working. Are there yeah, any questions so. for Earth or any questions for Julie on either of the presentations? Julie, were you working with Garrett and Lassen on these? Are you JB? That <laughs> she yeah. may be JB. <laughs> yeah, I did work there for oh. a summer. Okay, sweet. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I thought oh, I probably cool. dug some of those holes. I we went to over by Cindercone where you're just showing. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I and there there one of the things that I want in there, you know, would be like these are the people who dug this hole, right? To personalize um I don't know, soil survey and the experience cuz I I think I think the work that people do in soil survey is incredibly cool and it's like incredibly it's a lot of selfless service ultimately, I think, because it, it, it's a lot of hard work and it's cool, but how much these products actually like can help other people is just amazing. So. Awesome. I hope that, that, that other people find them useful because, you know, it's fun for us. It's, if you like soil, it's interesting work and it's fun to go be out in nature and dig pits. So I hope that, that other people find it interesting and useful. So I guess that brings me to a question, Julie, if people are interested in getting this sort of experience, are there jobs at NRCS for undergrads that they could get involved with this? Yes, um, there are occasionally, well, not occasionally, you know, there's all, they're always coming up um, like recent graduate jobs or there's, um, they keep changing what they call it. It's like a they used to call it pathways, um, but it's basically an intern position um, where you can work just a few hours um, or during the summer or whatever for the NRCS. And then um, you have a pathway to get hired after you graduate. Um, those positions are coming out all the time. Um, it, if anyone's interested, you can let, I guess, let Megan know and I can you, she can contact me and I can give you information. Okay. Um, and Irf just put in the chat. So usajobs.gov um, yeah. is the place to start and starting earlier than later with getting these jobs. Julie mentioned that getting um, kind of your foot in the door with this pathways um, 
kind of approach doing the internship it's super important so if you try and get a job later on like I did like myself it's very challenging <laughs> so the earlier you can start with the government jobs the better <laughs> Any other questions for our speakers? Cool. Well, if you guys think of anything, you can email me. Um, so you guys do have a lab. Um, yes, thanks, Lauren. So let's everybody thank our speakers. Somehow, verbally, chat-wise. <laughs> thanks for having us. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you guys for being Thank here. You. Cool, cool, cool. Thanks for listening. This is, I think, the first like guest presentation in a class I've ever given. So I'll leave with you with my sign off. Follow <laughs> yourself silly and dig up new adventures. Goodbye. <laughs>